My name is Tim Power. I am an associate pastor here at Salem. It is so good to see you all. How was your 4th of July? Every, every, everybody got 10 fingers still. My, my brother is an uh, ER nurse practitioner. He always asks my kids that right after 4th of July. So um, it's summertime right now, and we have been spending the last several weeks in a sermon series, and it's called Jesus Said. Now, as Christians, we want to orient our lives around the things that Jesus taught. So each week in this series, what we've been doing is take one big idea, one quote from the Gospels, and and trying to camp out there and, and really mine it for all it's worth, finding something in these sayings of Jesus. I want you to do do me a favor. Think for a moment about the people in your life who influenced you in a major way. I want you to think about maybe a coach, maybe a parent, uh, a teacher, someone who had a huge impact on the way that you think or act or live your life. And I want you to think about something they said to you, something that was a phrase or an idea that was woven in to every conversation or or many conversations and interactions you had. Can you think of something like that? Um, And I, I did this in the last service. I asked if folks had something that came to mind. Uh, if, if they could shout it out, if you have a, a phrase or a quote that someone close to you, a mentor or somebody uh, that, that taught you a great deal, if, if you have anything like that, you could feel free to shout it out. Remember your last name. Remember your last name. Be nice. Be nice. Be an iron fist in a velvet glove. Say that again. None of us are so good we don't bear watching. I'm going to ask Pastor Terry to share hers again from the last service. What was it? Pastor, this is for the live stream, folks. Pastor Terry's granny said, uh, I'm going to cut your tail off behind your ears? Okay. Words, words to live by. So my mom was one of my big influences in my life, obviously. And uh, she, she liked to say this phrase, we're all just walking each other home. And uh, what does that mean? To me, it means that in the end, life is a journey that we're all on together, and that the most important thing in life is our connection with each other and carrying each other along on the way. Now, it's probably worth reflecting for just a moment. Uh, What things do you say, do you say over and over again to your sphere of influence? And believe it or not, you have a sphere of influence. Some of us have a real big sphere of influence. Some of us have a smaller sphere of influence. But we all have some sphere of influence. What is something, what are the quotes that you are going to be remembered for? What would somebody say, oh, well, Tim always says this. Deb says this over and over again. Whether you know it or not, you're building a legacy of influence with the words that you use over and over again. Your words will be remembered. Does that scare you just a little bit? (laughs) Speaking of fear, I want to share again this short passage of Scripture because it's actually something Jesus is addressing, is, is this idea of fear. In John 14, 27, it says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. Now, one thing to know about the teachings of Jesus is that he talked about fear a lot during his short time in ministry. In fact, if you read many of the teachings of Jesus, there's one phrase that comes up uh, over and over again. It actually comes up throughout Scripture, but Jesus said this phrase. And if I'm honest, I don't always like it when I hear it. Uh, The phrase is this, fear not. Fear not. How helpful does that sound? How's that hit you? Um, my wife, when she's experiencing a lot of stress and high emotion, she loves it when I use this one phrase, calm down. <laughs> it works every time. 
No, it doesn't. It's never worked ever for anybody. No one has ever calmed down after hearing the phrase, calm down. It's usually the opposite I've found. In the same way, I don't really like this phrase, fear not, because it doesn't sound very helpful on its face. But I think that's because uh, it's not a really helpful translation. Now, Now think about this. The scriptures that we're reading weren't written in English. So... The Bible, as we read it, we're reading translations. The Old Testament is a translation of of Hebrew. The New Testament is a translation of Greek and Aramaic. Um, And and sometimes I think we need to take pains to better understand certain words and phrases and what's actually being said. When we read the word fear in the Bible, it can mean a lot of things. There is a healthy kind of fear that is simply our human ability to remember the past and to project into the future. That's actually a skill that is unique to human beings. Uh, It's one of the reasons we thrive as a species is because we have this unique ability to remember past situations and to project into the future with our imaginations and understand perceived threats. Um, Not all animals can do that, actually. It's one thing that sets us apart from many other animals. And that could be called fear, right? Right? That could be called fear, but really it's just a deep awareness of the variety of outcomes of any given situation. That's not what Jesus is talking about when he says, fear not. Jesus is talking about another word, and sometimes it can be translated this way in the scriptures. It's this word, anxiety. Anxiety. What is anxiety? Anxiety is when we choose to focus our attention on dread or terror to the point where it disrupts our mood and our ability to function. Disrupts our mood or our ability to function. So, while I don't believe we can be fearless, remember, fear can help us perceive real threats. Anxiety, though, it can cripple us. So I don't believe that we can be fearless, but I do believe that with God's help, we can fear less. We can't be fearless But with God's help, we can fear less. Now, how can we do that? I want to give a simple and practical way that we can move from anxiety to peace. Remember, Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. And boy, the world has given us a lot of anxiety, isn't it? Always. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. He's not talking about a healthy fear. He's talking about anxiety. It's interesting that when Jesus is saying this, it sounds like he's talking about anxiety like it's a choice, isn't it? Let me ask you, does anxiety ever feel like a choice to you? Do you ever think, boy, out of all possible options, I think what I'll choose is anxiety. (laughs) That's not how it works for me. Usually what happens is I just look at what's in front of me and then magically, like a miracle, voila, I'm anxious. So we can't necessarily choose our emotions, but here's the thing. What we can do is choose where we set our eyes. We can choose where we place our focus. Are we looking at something that causes us great terror Or do we choose to look at someone who is greater than fear, who is greater even than death, our Savior Jesus? When our faith in someone exceeds our fear of something, then anxiety loses its power, its grip in our lives. Maybe we can't be fearless, but with our eyes focused on Jesus, we can fear less. The Apostle Paul puts it this way in Philippians 4, 6, and 7. He says this, don't be anxious about anything. You see, Paul does the same thing. He makes it like anxiety is this choice we make. Don't be anxious about anything. Rather, bring up all of your requests to God in your, in your prayers and petitions along with giving thanks. Then the peace of God that exceeds all understanding will keep your hearts and minds safe in Christ Jesus. 
Now, we get in this verse a practical application, but it might have gone right past you. You might have missed it. We can't always control how we feel, but what we can do is control where we place our eyes. When we put our faith in someone, specifically our Savior Jesus, when that exceeds our fear of something, anxiety loses its power. Did you see what Paul actually told us to do, though? It's real easy to miss it. He tells us, when you're praying, listen to this. When we bring our petitions, our worries, everything that's bothering us to God, he says this, along with giving thanks. Can you say, along with giving thanks? Now say louder, along with giving thanks. thanks. Now here's why that is so, so important. It's really easy for me when I've got a lot of problems going on for me to just keep looking at the problem and keep looking at the problem. And even in my prayer, I'm saying, God, I've got a problem. God, I've got a problem. God, I've got a problem. And I just keep looking at what? The problem. What Paul is telling us is this, take your eyes off the problem. Look at all the good that the Lord has done. Shift your focus from the problem to thanksgiving. It will change everything along with giving thanks. It's a powerful thing to give thanks in all times and in all things. To give thanks changes everything. Everything. It's like a secret superpower that most people don't ever think about. I'm going to share a quick story. So I I take part in our tutoring program. By the way, if, if if you want to be transformed, become a tutor. Okay. Now, now we talk all the time about the impact it has on the students. The impact it's going to have on you is even greater. It is even greater. And so I, um, I, I had an opportunity this past semester uh, to tutor two kids. And I want to tell you a quick story about one of the kids. I'm, I'm going to call her Becky. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't get permission to share the story, so today I'm just going to call her Becky. But, but Becky uh, is, a, is a second grader that I worked with, and she... She had kind of a troubled home life. I, I, didn't, I didn't know this at first, but I noticed that we were having trouble. Um, we were having trouble just being able to focus in, in, in our sessions where, where, where she couldn't quite get the focus that we needed to get onto the work that we were trying to cover. Um, and, but I did talk to the teacher and she told me a little bit, well, I, there, there's a lot that's going on in her life that makes it difficult. Um, to, to get to that place. And, and so one thing I did was, and I did this with, with both the students I worked with this, this time, is I started out each of our times together by taking a break, breathing, and writing a gratitude list. Writing a gratitude list. And I wrote a gratitude list. One, two, three. I wrote three things that I'm grateful for. And then I had... Becky write three things that she was grateful for today. Um, now, I'm, I'll be honest. I, I, uh, it, you know, she she would write down all the, all sorts of different things. You know, uh, maybe she was thankful. Her mom was always on the list, uh, but sometimes it would be French fries, and I agree. Who isn't grateful for French fries, a Nintendo Switch, and those things? But uh, I honestly, I made it my goal selfishly to get on her list. I wanted her to be thankful for me. And I, put, and I dropped so many hints. Like I always put Becky number one on my list. I said, I'm thankful for you. <laughs> and then it was French fries, Nintendo Switch, mom, every week. So um, towards the end of our time together, uh, I think it was just in one of the last weeks, she, she, uh, she wrote down her list. And so I wrote down mine first, Becky number one. And uh, so she wrote hers, and I looked over, and it said, Mom, and then it said, Tim. Yeah, right? And then it said, Tim, Tim. And I was like, I made it on her list three times. And then she, then I said, oh, wow, well, read your list. So she, she read it, and she said, my mom, and then she said, I'm thankful for you. Yes, win. And then, then I said, I noticed you put my name again two more times. She goes, Tim Tim is my guinea pig. 
I think I, I personally think it's a great name for a guinea pig. But you know what? It, it changed everything about the time that we spent together when we started out with gratitude. It changed everything. And it can change everything for you as well. And so here's what I want to do for just a moment. uh, And and this might make a couple of y'all uncomfortable, uh, but we're going to be a little bit participatory. I want you to think of something you're grateful for right this second. Something that you're grateful for today. And I want you to turn to someone close by you. I would really prefer if it's somebody you didn't walk in the door with. Um, If you could turn towards somebody that maybe you don't know uh, and share this, but share something you're grateful for with someone around you. One thing that you are grateful for, go ahead. And if you're online, you can type it into the comment section. What are you grateful for today? Okay, I said share one thing. Some of you seem to be sharing a number of things, which is great. I'm glad you're grateful. We're on a schedule, people. When our faith in someone exceeds our fear of something, then anxiety loses its power in our lives. When we are thankful, what happens is we turn our eyes from our problem to the goodness of God and it changes everything. Maybe we can't be fearless, but with our eyes on Jesus, we can fear less. Will you pray with me? Holy God, I thank you for your faithfulness. I pray, God, that we could move our eyes from all of our troubles, move our eyes from from all of the ways that we sometimes feel let down, and, and focus a little bit on your goodness, if nothing else, on the goodness of the fact that you came to this earth and gave up your life so that we could have abundant life, yes, here, but also eternal life with you. I thank you for your great sacrifice on our behalf. Jesus, I thank you that you loved us so much. You gave up everything for us. Let our eyes rest on that every day. Let it be the first thing we look at in the morning, the first thing and the last thing we look at before we retire at night. Our Savior Jesus, help us, Lord God, to turn our eyes on you and your great faithfulness. We thank you, Lord God. Change our hearts to be hearts of gratitude and help us to be able to shine a light into a world that is desperate for hope. Let us find our peace, our perfect peace in you, our Savior. We pray this in your holy name. Amen.